How many of his own stunts did Keanu Reeves perform? Which scene was incredibly traumatic for an actor to film? And which are the hidden connections to The Matrix that you probably missed? Hi, I'm Clive. Let's dive right in! The Intense Training Make no mistake about it, John Wick is an extremely physical movie. It's bursting with insane action sequences and a lot of high-intensity choreography. While most action stars will rely on their stunt doubles to do the heavy lifting, Keanu decided he wasn't taking any shortcuts here. Instead, he put himself through a boot camp, training under SWAT teams and Navy SEALs, so that he could do 90% of his own stunts. Talk about making Tom Cruise look bad! Well, Keanu wasn't happy to just leave it there, though, as he took it to the next level for the sequel, partaking in three months of grueling training, which included Brazilian jiu-jitsu, driving lessons, and gun fu. In fact, he even trained under champion competitive shooter Taryn Butler to learn how to handle a gun better. Truth be told, it's incredible to see his dedication to his craft and how he put his body on the line to deliver the most authentic experience for the fans. And later on, we'll be discussing just how determined Keanu was, even when fighting illness. Daisy's tragic scene broke everyone. Undoubtedly, the most heartbreaking moment in John Wick is Daisy's tragic death. I mean, how can anyone do something so despicable to such an adorable beagle? Good thing that John sorted out those fools once and for all. The funny thing is, it could have been completely different, since the studio pushed hard for Daisy to survive, fearing the audience wouldn't take kindly to it. However, the directors decided the dog's death was necessary to serve as the main motivation for John's vengeance. Well, even if there was a good reason for it to happen, the actors were still left scarred by the scene. Trainer Kim Krafsky said the filming was emotional, especially for Omer Barnia, who played the killer. She said, He felt horrible. Every time the director yelled cut, he just picked up the dog and cuddled him. Aw, I'd probably do exactly the same thing. Well, the good news is Andy, the little dog that played Daisy, is alive and well, eagerly awaiting his next big role in Hollywood. Honestly, he deserves all the Oscars purely for his lovable nature and total cuteness. John Wick was supposed to be 60? Most movies go through multiple changes before we see what we do on screen. For John Wick, there were some fundamental changes made to the original script, written by Derek Colstead. Originally titled Scorn, this version of John Wick was supposed to be an elderly man in his mid-60s. However, the casting team decided to go in a different direction, bringing in an actor who wasn't in his 60s but still mature and believable enough to have had John's storied history. When Keanu Reeves hopped on board the project, he made another suggestion to change the film's title from Scorn to the character's name. In all likelihood, if the casting directors hadn't made this pivotal decision, it's possible that we would have seen someone like Liam Neeson in the role of John Wick. While that's a pretty interesting prospect, it probably would have felt just like another Taken sequel. Well, the right call was certainly made here because we just can't imagine anyone else but Keanu in this iconic part. Keanu's Bad Fever on Set so, we've already discussed how much training Keanu went through to pull off the memorable stunts and fight scenes in John Wick. But did you know that he worked while he was extremely sick? Yep, as it turns out, Keanu isn't a complainer, and he just gets on with it, no matter how terrible he's feeling on the inside. Phew, I need a good dose of that mojo. According to the director's commentary, Keanu filmed the epic nightclub fight scene while battling the flu and a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Instead of calling off the shoot and delaying the production, he dug deep and nailed this now legendary fight sequence. More impressively, Keanu had to learn all the stunts and choreography for the scene on the day it was filmed. Now, remember, this is the longest and most complicated action sequence in the movie, and he's battling a horrible fever and probably feeling like he'd rather be lying down in a warm bed. But he still does it! If that doesn't scream superhero material, I don't know what does. How many other actors would call off the shoot if they were just in a bad mood? Keanu is simply a treasure, and we must protect him at all costs. The Horrible Onset Injury In an action-packed film like John Wick, accidents will happen. With so many fists and kicks flying around, it isn't surprising to hear that actors catch a trailing punch or foot every so often. Unfortunately, for the late Michael Nickvist, who played Vigo in the movie, his injury was almost life-threatening. While filming a fight scene, his head was sliced open, resulting in a severed ear and him requiring a reported 80 stitches. 
I'm feeling queasy just thinking about it. Yet, Michael soldiered on like the total pro he was and filmed the rest of his scenes, as soon as he was feeling better and all stitched up. Considering how bad and horrible the injury was, however, numerous scenes had to be reshot to hide his noticeable scar. In an interview a few years later, Michael said that it was a near-death experience for him, and he actually saw a tunnel after it happened. Sadly, the actor passed away in 2017 at the age of 56. Who really is the Baba Yaga? If you're a bad guy or a dog hater, you should fear John Wick, because he's one badass dude who won't stop coming for you. Heck, they even refer to him as the Baba Yaga, the person you send in to kill the boogeyman. That being said, the film's definition of the Boogeyman Slayer isn't quite so accurate here. You see, the Baba Yaga is actually a supernatural being from Slavic folklore, who's normally described as a deformed or ferocious old lady who stands on chicken legs. In fact, some people even compare this creature to the fabled witch from Hansel and Gretel. Now, while John might be pretty scary to his enemies, he doesn't exactly have chicken legs, nor is he an old, deformed woman. Am I right? Maybe the fourth film in the series might explore this nickname a little more? Because it's quite the odd name for him, to be honest. Sure, he might be a nightmare for anyone to handle, but a witch-like being? Come on, that's pushing it. Keanu handpicked the directors. Sometimes, stars are associated with projects long before directors are even considered. In terms of John Wick, Keanu had been part of it for a while, working closely with the writer to fine-tune the script. When it came time to select the director for the project, Keanu had two specific people in mind, David Leitch and Chad Stahelski. In a past interview, Keanu revealed the following. When I got the script, I immediately thought of Chad and Dave for the action design, but I was secretly hoping they'd want to direct it. I knew that they would love the genre, and I knew that they would love John Wick. Thanks to Keanu's clout and influence in the industry, it was a done deal, and the studio entrusted the actors' chosen directors with the production. And the rest, as they say, is history. Judging by what they produce, though, it certainly appears like Keanu also has a good knack for spotting talent where others might not see it. Is there anything that this man can't do? The Matrix Connection of course, most fans know Keanu from his role as Neo in The Matrix, and the John Wick series reunited him with his co-star from the classic sci-fi film, Morpheus himself, Lawrence Fishburne. However, there's another surprising connection that most people might not be aware of. John Wick's directors David Leitch and Chad Stahelski were stuntmen on The Matrix, and Chad was actually Keanu's stuntman. Naturally, the actor had stayed in touch with David and Chad over the years and even opened the door for Lawrence to join the second film. In an interview, Chad revealed the following. When Derek Colstead had written the character that Lawrence plays in the script, it was really written with Lawrence in mind. We hadn't worked together in a very long time. Keanu gave us a nice intro when they bumped into each other. And there was yet another Matrix alumnus who made an appearance in this new franchise. If you keep your eyes peeled, you'll spot Randall Duke Kim, who played the keymaker in The Matrix Reloaded, as a doctor in the first John Wick film. It's like the best mini reunion ever, right? The Surprisingly Absent Producer it's not unusual for films to have several producers on board. In the case of John Wick, one of the most notable producers was Desperate Housewives superstar Eva Longoria. While the film was undoubtedly a major win for her and the rest of the producers, she actually had very little involvement in it. According to the DVD commentary for the first film, the director said they never met her, but would still like to thank her for writing the check. Honestly, this sounds like the absolute dream relationship in Hollywood. How often do we hear about directors clashing with producers over their creative vision and having to fight for their decisions to be greenlit? Yet, here's Eva, putting her money where her mouth is and letting the creatives do what they do best. You know, create, and still cashing in at the end of the day. Perhaps it's a good lesson for everyone else in showbiz, wouldn't you agree? As one of the most innovative action franchises in the world, John Wick has wowed fans with its jaw-dropping set pieces and revolutionary fight scenes. Even though there have been three films to date, it seems like there's no end in sight for the Baba Yaga's butt-kicking adventure. And to be perfectly honest, we hope they don't stop anytime soon. But now, it's time to hear from you. Do you think that Daisy should have survived in the film? And how impressed are you by the amount of effort that Keanu put into the role? Thanks for watching, and don't forget to let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And while you're at it, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for some more awesome videos.